Hi fellas. You won't find out of Google ever or Western teachers or Western lecturers but the fact remains that the Middle East we're talking Egypt, Syria, Iraq, Lebanon, Palestine, Saudi Arabia for a while was entirely Christian and with a small percentage of Jews for roughly four to six hundred years before Islam made its appearance. Before the prophet, the false prophet, had his visions in the caves of Hera and he told them they were the master race and they could invade and kill and rape and rob and loot all other peoples and that was okay. Yes, before this, these happenings in 627 AD, well for those 600 years before onto the you know referring to the christian calendar from zero if you like christ's birthday to 627 a.d the whole middle east was relatively peaceful and christian and jewish this is a fact well in egypt even in egypt these forced conversions these executions were prevalent it's common under sharia for people that are allowed to live if they're allowed to live and were not executed as with the prophet's old gangsters uh, in, in their book. Yes, they have to pay a jizya. A jizya is an extortion tax. A jizya is punishment for being an infidel, for being a dirty kufar or kafir, kufar plural. Yes, this, this jizya often is set so high that the only way that people can pay this jizya, certainly in the past anyway, was for to let them steal your children. Yes, I'm not kidding. This is what they did in, in the Greek islands, in Spain, all over the Middle East. They mounted a jizya tax so high, so they could be lazy gangsters, lazy violent gangsters, not do any useful work, and just take people's kids and women and sell them as sex slaves. And this is what they did for roughly 1400 years. See, so you can see why they suddenly converted. Well, they wanted to convert to to Islam, can't you? Because it usually meant if they didn't, it usually meant you know your children got taken, you got your head chopped off, or you know you were constantly enslaved under under their jizya rules, their extortion tax rules. You'd be working just not to make yourself any better off, just to pay your infidel jizya tax, as we see in Egypt. Uh, anti-Christian feeling is widespread uh, and it's rising and it has been all over the Middle East it has to be said I mean last year in Egypt I think there's a, you can, I'll put a link underneath there was roughly 150 Christians were bombed out of their churches the Coptic Christians these a bit like the Greek Greek Orthodox a bit like the Catholics in fact um, but Christians nevertheless all parts of the Christian Brotherhood as you would call it in days gone by yeah he reveals the, the horrible life as a Christian in Egypt. This is a Christian businessman who took up a false name. Uh, you can see all the bombings. It's, there's been some terrible bombings. Um, just just ISIS suicide bombers. Well, I'm going to teach these infidels a lesson. Just walk into a Coptic church. Bang. You know, there's, there's 40, 40 infidels gone. Which for them means they can go to heaven. They can go to heaven where they can lie on couches all day... Uh, enjoying was it 70 plus virgins young boys yes don't forget that don't forget the young boys really essential in heaven them and they can lie back drinking sweet wine and eating fruit all day strange type, type of paradise to me but uh, this was a father who spoke to the express using a false name uh, 2017 has been the worst year on record for Christian persecution with more than 130 wor worshippers slaughtered inside churches but the other gang were always the victims isn't this strange they always play the victim card but in this case it's some of their cronies some of their gangsters some of their warriors who are doing all the killing again Yes, uh, I'm not, some of these are probably due to ISIS, some of them are probably due to other extremists, because there's so many extremist groups follow this ideology. Uh, they're all following the way of the prophets, because he was a gangster and a killer, and, and uh, you know, he stole people's kids, stole people's houses, stole people's cattle, all their wealth and their wives. So, you know, they are, in effect, acting like he did. 
Uh, here we are. And last month, gunmen opened fire on a church in Cairo, Cairo, killing nine people, including a police officer who raced to the aid of the worshippers. Oh, God bless him. At least he tried to do his bloody job. At least he raced in there and, and tried to tackle them. And, uh, I bet he was a Muslim guy. Uh, yeah, Christian persecution watchdog opened doors. Ah, I've seen them on Twitter. I didn't know what it was referring to. I'll have to add them. I thought it was something to do with uh, immigration or something. Um, yeah, they, they say Egypt is now facing an unprecedented level of persecution with the country's Coptic Christian population, which numbers around 10 million, uh, being targeted in numerous attacks. I've seen there was one literally about five, six months ago where they killed about 40 people. I remember reading that. Yeah, uh, but as well as this, you know, this deadly threat, they're always looked down upon, literally spat upon in the streets, uh, called dirty scum. Uh, this guy's experienced this. He's seen it growing up. He's been called dirty infidels. He's, you know, he's seen it. They are seen as being inferior. Here's some of the Christian funerals. Oh, I've got a picture of Mary. I'm on the coffins. There we are. It's very. I believe it's very similar to, to the Catholic Church, which is no so big surprise because it all emanated from from Catholicism and Palestine and spread spread throughout. The fact they've got the the picture of. Uh, Mary Magdalene on there strongly reinforces this, of course. That's uh, largely who the Catholic Church follows. Yeah, here we are. Since I was a child, I've bared a lot of experiences. Intimidation, whatever. Well, I was not violently attacked, but I've definitely been discriminated, discriminated against. My wife, my father, my mother, because of that radical mentality. Well, the radical mentality has been there since 627. Just to, to put a nice, a nice religion of peace face here on it. Completely false fascia and a very thin fascia at that. Very thin fascia. I mean, look at that. Oh, look at that. Church been blown to hell. Human blood all over the floor. Not terrible. But anyway, thanks to the Express for bringing us this. Um, I've not seen it mentioned in so many places that it's probably part of the Breibart movement who do show up a lot more than everybody else. Of course, if you look, if you look on uh, Google, you will never know that the Middle East was Christian and partially Jewish. For six, five, six hundred years before Islam, because this is being com Sharia compliant, just as ISIS demolished all of the, all the very ancient churches and monuments. Um, so Google joins in with this eradicating history. The fact that you know Palestine was Christian, and this is largely what, and the Middle East was Christian entirely for a long time. This is why our King Richard and King Richard I, Lionheart. Because, boy, he was. <laughs> and uh, his ally, which, uh, Philip II of, of France, both sent massive armies, put their heads on the line, and went and fought for our brother Christians, just like these, and for access to Jerusalem. And tens of thousands of them never made it home. And despite what the bullshit you read in the, in the history books, they were Christendom's crusaders. And in, in my mind's eye, at least... They still remain so. Okay. See you guys.